I'm going to stand with one heel at the wall. And today I want you to notice if you want to stand with your heel lower or much higher and how that affects the bend of the knee. Regardless of what you choose, step the standing foot so that the knees are flush. And while you have the weights in hand, come upright and take the arms back. You might make it all the way to the wall and therefore press them back. Lift your gaze, root the inner heels, lengthen the tailbone down, lift the pelvic floor. And just notice that all of those are light actions, steadied by a smooth, even breath. At first, we're going to change the angle of the arms. We're going to take the arms wider, and we're going to continue to press back. You can appreciate that we might not always have to have a weight in hand to do this, because the isometric work of pressing back takes care of a strengthening pattern. So here we're doing double duty. When you're ready for change, bring the arms in, turn the palms inward, bend in your elbows, and think that if you are taking a walk, walking through this frame, where would your arms be? Which way would they be held? So swing one arm more forward and follow the natural tendency. And then switch which arm is forward and you'll feel the shift through your core and it might feel a little awkward. And then go back to what is the natural tendency and swing again. So this is not an extreme kind of preparation but it's very functional. Let's do that one more time. This time exaggerate how high the front arm is, how far back the back arm is, how the legs are really pushing, and then switch, getting a little bit more elevation. We'll come back to this. Relax. Look down at your feet and step the back leg to the front leg. The idea is to work from the same distance if you can comfortably for the other side. So whenever I use this, many levels of ability, all students, all classes in private work, I try to notice when we come to this place, what's happening here relative to the ground. And when we arrive here, is there a shift to one side? What does that tell us about where we can give attention to strengthening? Let's start with lifting the gaze. This is a great, easy, standalone kind of exercise to do using a pared down version of Warrior One. You can do it without a wall even. Take the arms wider, let your shoulders have a strengthening pattern that's a little bit more broad, challenges the back of the shoulders and the upper rib cage and then some. Bring the arms really close to each other and still resist the wall if you can comfortably. Notice how the legs turn on a little bit more. But while we have weights in hand, we're going to exaggerate what happens when we walk. Swing the arms in. Find that natural tendency of where the arms would swing to. Just hold that position. So we count on this cross body movement for the sake of balance, for locomotion, for a steady gait. Moving with breath, holding a little bit of time, and then getting to the last repetition where we are going to exaggerate a little bit more height, if you wish, if you will. Humor me for just a bit. Drop the elbows and look down. Look down so that you can see your toes. And swing the arms again and just notice where the workload is. But notice what's happening in your upper back. And now lift your gaze, lift your heart, and notice how the upper back is engaged. So the reason I had us lift our gaze is so that we could include as much of the muscle fibers through the extensors, the back body, as possible. Look down, step the back foot to the front foot. Very nice. Sending the first leg back, we are going to straight leg position, and we're going to uh, take a nice, comfortable step forward. We're going to do a prepared, a preparation for a revolved triangle. 
So I'm not trying to exaggerate how far I am right off the bat. I'm trying to get a comfortable stance, nice and wide, and then square the pelvis, take the arms wide as we come and fold. At first, if you will, the back leg will find the steadiness that comes from pressing into the wall. Lower the arms and lift. Keep pressing the back leg into the wall. Keep looking ahead, lengthening the front spine, moving with breath. And this is a wonderful way to strengthen all of the extensors of the back. They're holding you against gravity. We can bring the weight to the inner edges of the feet ever so lightly, reaching into the inner heels. We're gonna try one more. And as we lower the arms, the idea now is draw the, drawing the elbows back. Turning the palms up as we extend the arms back. And then swinging the arms forward, palms facing each other. Let's do that one more time. I'm gonna swing the arms back, turning the palms up, feeling the shift. Swing the arms forward, turning the palms inward, and then bending in the front knee, keeping the arms right in front of us, shoulder height coming upright with shoulder retraction. And we can stay here and do a few bicep curls. So we can keep the back heel with the wall. Again, it lends itself to a steadiness, a little bit of isometric work for that superficial back line of the body. The challenge would be to lift the back heel, pivot off the foot and plant it into the wall. I realize that's not for everyone. Notice how you engage the glutes a little bit more when you do that. If your shoulders become tired, you can drop the elbows, but I am challenging us to move from the elbows and keep the elbows the height of the shoulder. Let's do two more. And then we'll drop the elbows and step the back leg to the front leg. So again, the challenge is to work from the same distance for the other side. Do what you need. Anchor the back foot flat with the floor. It's turned well forward. We are not walking the tightrope. The distance between your feet depends on you. And we're coming into a fold. So this time we're gonna draw the elbows wide and drop the wings. Draw the elbows wide and drop the wings. We're gonna do this from an upright position in just a little bit. Look ahead, decide how much of a fold that you're comfortable with. Keep inviting the hip point of the back leg more forward. Root the inner heels. And the next time the elbows are wide, let the arms drop down and then travel up nice and wide. We're gonna do a few repetitions just like this. Very nice, everyone. So we're doing slightly different work on this side, still holding the back to the same workload. And then as you draw the elbows this time, turn the palms inward and we're gonna work out. So now we have a little bit more of an isolating of those triceps doing more work with the big latissimus muscle. And again, the amount of fold is up to you. Let's do two more, slow and controlled. As you lower the arms, swing them both forward, bend in the front knee, Keep the arms parallel to the floor, please. Come upright, very nice. And here we're going to take the arms straight up toward the ceiling, bending in the elbows and reaching straight up. So last time we did bicep work, this time tricep work. If you will lift the back heel, if that's what you did on the other side and park the heel with the wall, it's an option. What we're trying to do here is to move mostly from the elbows and not so much in the shoulders. We're all working on it. I am too. Every time we reach up, we want to really extend. Remember, everything that's long wants to be longer. And we'll do two more. Mm -hmm. Stepping the back leg to the front leg. Coming to sit, lowering the arms, coming to stand, 
sending the arms slightly back, lifting the elbows and rolling the shoulder blades down and back. Very nice. <laughs> 